Hey there, this is Nick, and today we're diving into Builder Trend, and this is the first of many, many videos on this amazing software. Now, I've dabbled in tutorials on Builder Trend in the past, but I'm really going to dive into it full scale right now because I truly believe in the product. If you know anything about me, I only teach software and products and processes systems that I use myself personally. And I'm telling you right now, I've been using Builder Trend for a bit and it is amazing. It is truly the best product out there. So I wanna dive deep into this software. I wanna start simple, but then build up into the amazing functionality that it has and really demystify all aspects of it for you. So this again is the first of many. All right, we're gonna have a full series on Builder Trend. I wanna hear your questions. I wanna see your comments as well. Let me know what you're struggling with and I guarantee you we're gonna be able to solve those problems together and make use of this amazing software so that you can manage complex projects while wow your customers and ultimately scale your building remodeling business or investing business. Let's get after it. So getting started with Builder Trend, what is it? Who is it for? You probably know this, but let's dive into it. It's comprehensive construction project management software. So it's project management software specifically for the construction industry. Okay, so this is if you're managing any kind of build out or remodel, um, spec home, anything like that, where you're building out a construction project, that is what Builder Trend is for. I will say that it is primarily geared toward residential building and remodeling as opposed to commercial. It replaces all your spreadsheets, your offline GANs, your emails, everything. The idea here is that if we keep all of our information in Builder Trend, it's in one centralized location. We no longer need to keep all those extra files floating around, pieces of paper, whiteboards, all that stuff. We're going to have it one consistent place for ourselves, our customers, our stakeholders to view and understand. And who is it for? Obviously, builders, remodelers, and also flippers. So a lot of you out there are flipping houses. It could be useful for you as well, okay? So it is really the best project management software for residential construction that I've ever seen and used. So it could work really well for you as well. You're gonna have a little bit of a different use case in that you don't necessarily have a customer on the other end, which is something that Builder Trend does really well, by the way. You won't necessarily have that customer on the other end, and so therefore some of the features you might not need to use, but I would say 80, 90% are gonna be amazing for you. So here's where we need to focus on how to use the software properly. And that is we need to start small and build gradually. So Builder Trend can do so, so much. In fact, it can almost do everything you need to do within a construction project, but that means it can be potentially overwhelming. When you log in for the first time, you have all those features available to you and you start to get scatterbrained, right? We start to do all the sorts of things that we can do and we're finding we're getting a really broad breath and we're not going too deep into anything. And so what I wanna focus on is trying to, you know, looking at the 80-20 principle and finding out what are we getting the highest return for? What's the biggest bang for our buck? What will become easier because we're focusing on a certain feature now? We're gonna really focus on that in this lesson and those that follow. We're gonna start with the schedule. We're gonna talk about why in a second. We're gonna build from there. And we wanna make sure we embrace templates. So there's so much that can take a super long time in Builder Trend just because there's so much information that you could put into the system that we want to be able to use templates. If we can do that, we can save ourselves a lot of time and we can build consistency in our SOPs and our processes within our business, which is huge, okay? So to be able to go from project to project and have a really similar setup when it comes to your schedule, your to-dos, your daily logs, your selections, all that stuff, that's gonna become key and templates allow us to do that. So I want you to build from the schedule out. What I've found is that the core of Builder Trend is the schedule. There's so many pieces that are dependent on it and it's like a quick win, okay? If more than anything, we can just get the schedule in there and we can share that with our customers or share that with our key stakeholders, that's already a win for us, okay? So we wanna start with the schedule. That is absolutely the biggest bang for your buck, lowest hanging fruit and helps us with all the rest of it, okay? So we're gonna start with the schedule and that's what this exact lesson is about. We're gonna talk about schedule today. Then we're gonna build on top of that our to-dos, our selections, daily logs, change orders, maybe a few other project management aspects, but we're gonna build those other pieces off of it. And you're gonna see how they're actually dependent on the schedule. Then we'll start building on our documents, maybe our messaging as well. And lastly, we're getting to some really important features, but again, I find that the other three are more important. We can look at time clock, financials, reporting, and sales. And the financials is huge, okay? Don't get me wrong. Financials, job costing, all of that is really important, but it's also really complex and takes a while to set up. And so I'd rather we get those first three circles honed in really strong and then build the financials on top of it. And you're gonna find that's an easier way to go about it. All right, so let's talk about scheduling. 
You're going to hear me say this a lot with Builder Trend. And, and by the way, anytime that I say, hey, keep it simple, that's because I've made the mistake of making it complex in the past, right? And that's why we've kind of waited to produce all these videos is because I want to work out the kinks within my own system. I've done that and I'm going to share that with you today. Keep it simple. Default to dependencies. That drives the bus. Dependencies are so, so important in Builder Trend. We're going to talk about that. Don't overdo the assignments yet. So assigning to a specific person, a specific trade, we'll deal with that later. And be generous with your Slack. So um, one thing that's always true with construction scheduling is that we think things are going to take less time than they actually take. So build in some Slack. Make sure there's room in your schedule because we don't want your schedule to be out of date the second one task moves. We want to have some Slack in there. All right, so let's get into it. I'm going to be teaching most of these lessons right within Builder Trend itself. So let's get over there and start playing around. So to demonstrate this, I got this project up here, 365 Central Park. I'm going to use this as kind of a template. I literally just created this, so there's nothing going on with it at all. Now, I didn't create this one from a template yet. I'm going to build out templates through the course of this series, and we're going to talk about how those work. But really, I find the best way to create a template is to use a really strong sample project first. So I'm going to take this 365 Central Park. And we're going to go right to the schedule. I know that you're probably playing with all these other things, and that's fine. If you already got Builder Trend set up, that's okay too. Just take a step back and just watch this, and like, let's get down to basics with the schedule. The first thing I want to bring up before I get into the schedule, if I go to the information on this project, you're going to see that we have a job color of whatever, navy in this case. All that means is that when we are displaying multiple jobs, it's going to display this job as navy. Also, unfortunately, I feel it's going to create all new tasks with this default color, which is okay. Uh, but it's something that I wish they would improve and they might eventually, it's a small little issue, but I, I wish we could kind of have a little bit more say over how they create schedule items. But right now it's gonna create them as Navy. That's fine, uh, we're good on that. Now I am gonna go, let's go to options. Um, nope, that's it for now. Okay, cool. So let's go to the schedule. I'm gonna go right there. Now, the schedule, there's a few different ways to view the schedule. You got your calendar, your list, and your Gantt. I like to build out a schedule in the Gantt chart. I actually like to visualize the schedule mostly in a Gantt chart as well. Um, that's up to you how you want to see it. We're gonna to go to the Gantt to build it, and then um, we can maybe view it on the calendar. What I like about the Gantt is that it, we are able to visualize dependencies. So let's build our first schedule item to go here. So what I encourage you to do is to create your first schedule item as production start. Really simple. Okay, so production start is my first schedule item. Leave assignee blank for now. Let's just set some kind of date, all right? This is gonna be a one workday thing. Uh, no reminders, no predecessors yet. Phases, okay, so this is something I want you to think about, your phases. I've set up my phases like this, demo and roughens, drywall and paint, flooring and tile, carpentry, exterior finish. You can create these and edit these in your settings. This is just an, an initial starter for us, okay? I'm gonna put this as demo and roughens. Not gonna use tags just yet. That's good for now. Let's save and close. Let's just start to popula populate my schedule here. All right, so there you see one single line. Now, the reason I like to have a production start is for this exact reason. The first thing that we usually do on a project, at least when we like are on site, is we do demo, right? So that should be some kind of um, task. Now, demo might take three days or so. I don't really know when I'm gonna start it, but here's what we can do, and we're gonna to start to build in predecessors and dependencies, okay? This is where the schedule becomes so powerful. I'm going to say that demo is dependent on my production start with a lag of zero days, meaning the day that my production start happens, and this is actually a start to start, okay? The day that my production start happens, I'm gonna start my demo, all right? Let me just save and close this. I'm gonna make sure it's added to the right phase there, demo and rough ends. And what you can see is the little line that happens. Now, one thing I do, because what um, Builder Trend is gonna sort this alphabetically, I'll usually create this task and do a one, because I like to see it at the top. So I'm just gonna do one production start. And then you can see the start to start dependency. All right, now why I love doing that is that, and this is what's so powerful about the whole schedule, when, if and when I move this production start out or in, it's gonna bring the entire piece with it. And then we're gonna have items that are dependent on demo, items that are dependent on those items, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This makes it really dynamic. If anybody's ever scheduled on a whiteboard, you know the pain of creating the schedule and all these dependencies, and then something changes, you have to erase the whole thing, right? And that can happen within seconds. And so we don't want that to happen at all. I'm gonna create another scheduling item. Let's just call this framing. We'll say three. 
And just like I was doing before with the demo, I'm gonna assign this to demo and rough ends, and I'm gonna make this uh, dependent on demo. Now, this is these are finished to start, so meaning when demo finishes, my framing would start. If I made the start to start, it would mean when demo starts, my framing can start, but that's not the case. It might be the case, sometimes we use start to start when it's like, something starts and maybe I can start the next task two days later than it starts, that might be possible, in which you could do a start to start with like a two day lag, okay? Meaning once demo starts, two days later, my framing can start. But for this, I'm gonna do finish to start. Once uh, my demo finishes, my framing can start on that day, save and close. Okay, so you can see it starts to build out nicely. Okay, now let's just do a couple more just to just to get our rough ends and let's do rough HVAC. Let's say that's two days. And that's dependent on framing. Now you can see this kind of takes a while, right? Now I can do save and new. This kind of takes a while. That's why templates are gonna be so helpful. Rough plumbing. All right, let's say rough plumbing's three days. And I don't wanna do my plumbing till my HVAC is done. Let's do one more. Uh, and here I'm gonna do rough electric. And here let's use um, a start to start. So let's say that I don't want my electrician and my plumber walking on top of each other, but generally speaking, as long as like the plumber's started and he's had a couple days to work, we can maybe do a start to start plus two. And let's see what our schedule looks like now. All right, so there we have demo to framing to rough HVAC to rough plumbing, and then here's my start to start. Now I mentioned adding a lot of slack in here, and I definitely encourage you to do that. You can add slack in a couple of ways. One is on the duration of the tasks, or two is on the dependencies. I kind of go back and forth on how this works. Uh, lately, I've been doing it more on the duration of the tasks. So demo, maybe it, we think it's gonna take three days, but you know, then there's some cleanup and then we gotta get our framing crew in there. So maybe we just say it's gonna take the whole week. I found that that's a little bit more helpful than trying to jam it all in, all right? And you can see how it moves everything out then. So decide how you wanna build in the slack. Another way you could have done that is you could say, you know, demo is gonna take three days, save it, okay? But then my framing, here's the link down here, it's going to be finished to start plus a lag of two days, and it's gonna accomplish pretty much the same thing of building in that slack there, okay? So it's up to you how you think that makes most sense. All right, so we're starting to build out our schedule and things are starting to look pretty good. Now, just a few other items on how we can view the schedule and, and some admin on this. Then I'm gonna like build it all out offline and really come back to you with like a more thorough schedule is online or offline, okay? So right now I'm in offline mode and I encourage you that whenever you're building a schedule or doing mass edits to a schedule, stay in offline mode. The reason is that if I'm on online mode, okay, whenever I move an item, I can't click and drag it for one. So that's kind of a problem. And then if I were to move an item, it's going to ask if I wanna notify people. Okay, and I don't, or if I wanna record shifts, okay? So if we're doing a lot of stuff, it's gonna ask us that way too much, and it's gonna become annoying and, and really tedious. So wherever we're doing a lot of work, let's turn the schedule offline, and now I can click and drag this one task, move it, it's gonna move the whole schedule. All right, amazing, that's super good. All right, the other thing is we can view different columns here, okay? So to view that, I can go grid settings, and I can just click here to say, hey, I might want the end date on there, assignee, and whether it's complete or not, let's save that. And now I can see a little bit more. Maybe that's useful to you, maybe not. As we start assigning, we're gonna see a little bit more there. All right, and we can filter as well. That's not too useful yet. I'm gonna show you tags in the future, in which case that will be really, really useful. We'll go to list. Okay, I can see things here, and now I can see on my calendar as well. Now, right now, I've kept everything the same color. All right, that's up to you how you want to work that. What I tend to do is I tend to color my tasks based on what type of task they are. So if it's just like kind of a standard task within that phase, I'll probably color all of these to be um, that same color as the phase. So this phase happens to be rows. So I'd probably do this, okay? It's up to you. You could just leave them all the same. And then what I do with like something like this, a production start, this is kind of a milestone. Maybe I'll tag that as a milestone. Okay, and maybe those colors stay the project color, okay? We could have like another milestone, for example, 
Um, we could say that like we have an electrical walkthrough or um, electrical inspection. All right, maybe I'll leave that one, maybe, and that's dependent on my rough electric. Oops, I'm sorry, that's demo rough ends, and that's dependent on my rough electric. I need to do that, you know, once rough electric's done, and maybe this tag you could have as inspection and milestone, okay? And this is an example where now I can take my schedule, whether I'm on the Gantt or on the list, and I can filter and I can say, hey, give me anything that's a milestone and apply that filter and that'll give me those. And that's really useful if we're looking at like a list. Okay, so here's a huge list of all the stuff we gotta do. All right, I can filter this list down by just the milestone tags or maybe just the inspections, right? Super useful. I find this to be a really good way to help communicate with third parties, whether they be designers or vendors. Hey, what dates do you need stuff by? We'll build into our schedule all these different specific dates that are dependent. So, okay, rough plumbing starts this day. I'm gonna need my fixtures a week early, okay? Let's do that, let me demonstrate that for you, okay? Let's go to the Gantt, let's just create a new schedule item. Let's say rough, or let's say plumbing fixture delivery, okay? And we're gonna make this demo and rough ends. Tag is gonna be, we'll just do milestone for now. All right, and then we'll go predecessor is um, rough plumbing. Okay, so we'll do a start to start minus five work days. Actually, let's see. Yep, minus five work days. Okay, let me save and close that. And so that would tell me that, hey, I need my plumbing fixture delivery five days before plumbing. So I can tell my designer, whoever I'm getting those for, hey, April 19th today. If and when my production start moves out, I can say, oh, never mind, May 6th is the date, right? And we can give them that list. So you can see why these dependencies are so powerful, so important. We're barely scratching the surface with the schedule. You're gonna see in many of these videos, we're gonna keep building this thing out, looking at all the cool ways we can do this and filter it and, and navigate with it. And we build on that second layer, okay? And what's so cool about this is everything's dependent on the schedule, to-dos, selections, change orders, invoices, bills, all that stuff. So getting the schedule right and rock solid, that is the core of the functionality within Builder Trend. We're just scratching the surface with this stuff. I wanna hear your comments, wanna hear your questions. We'll have follow-ups on this. We're gonna keep building out these examples as well to really give ourselves a strong foundation of how to use this amazing software. Leave your comments here, subscribe to this channel, make sure you get updates, subscribe to this playlist as well, and check out all the free resources available at IncomeDigs.com, and I will see you on the next video.